Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Uh, sorry that there was a little boring 50 seconds there. This is my technical first time doing a Facebook live stream this way. I have a new computer set up. Anyways, enough talking about all that. We have a very special guest sitting over here to my left. Dr. Corey Hall is in the building today. Can everyone please say hello to Dr. Corey Hall? And uh, welcome, Dr. Hall. How are you doing today? I am doing fine. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you today. It's awesome to have you here. I, and uh, it, I'm super, I, super excited to share with all of our users um, and really let them know about the awesome material that you have in Piano Marvel that we've been uploading uh, during the past couple months. And also just get to hear from the guy who made all this awesome material that's really, really awesome and helpful for a piano student. It's awesome to have you on here to be talking about how to utilize it more effectively and just to get to hear more about it. Uh, so thank you so much for being here. I know that I'm super excited and uh, I'm excited for everyone else that's tuning in uh, to get to see this, whether they're tuning in live right now or tuning in later. So uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, Dr. Hall, do you have anything that you'd like to say um, before I start going here? I'm going to make sure that things are live and I'm, I want to let people know that they can start uh, throwing out their questions for the question and answer that we're going to do at the end. But yeah, Dr. Hall, do you have anything that you'd like to talk about before I jump into uh -huh. this live stream? Yeah, I'll just, for, the, for those that don't know me, um, of course, I'm, you know, Bob Scholar on YouTube. Uh, um, you know, uh, over the past couple of years, I've been gravitating more towards actually teaching and education, making books for the benefit of pianists. And um, so my time on YouTube, making YouTube videos has been limited, especially in the last year, which is actually a good thing because it's led to some very fruitful uh, projects and these big books that I'm writing now for pianists. Um, also, um, oh, I just wanted to mention my, um, you know, I, I also put a lot of time into um, the well-rounded pianist, the well-rounded pianist.com. So uh, for any listeners who are members of Piano Marvel, they might also want to explore the well-rounded pianist where I make um, videos, video tutorials now, over 1,700 videos on their in all aspects of piano, and including my books, my forthcoming books, and the books that, that I have um, already published already. And so uh, wellroundedpianist.com, you might want to check that out. In addition to Piano Marvel, they're, they're both um, excellent resources to have. Both one, uh, you know, does something a little different. And um, so I invite people to, to check out my main teaching website. That's where I spend most of my time when I'm not teaching privately. I currently have uh, roughly 30 to perhaps 35 students uh, on Skype from all over the world. So I'm very busy uh, teaching uh, Monday through Friday on Skype to piano students all over the world. And when I'm not doing that, I'm doing either one of two things. One of two things, in addition to my Skype teaching, I'm maintaining and making videos for the well-rounded pianist, and I am making books for the benefit of pianists, such as the ones, the two books, especially that I'm going to talk about today. So um, I am. Uh, I view myself more now as an educator. I am not a concert pianist. <laughs> I don't, actually, I prefer to just play in my living room here, make books and teach and spread knowledge throughout the world. So, uh, you know, just so you know a little about me, what I do, this is, this is my, this, this is what I do. I sit here in my room all day. I teach piano. I make books. Uh, you know, I, you know, prepare things for Piano Marvel, prepare things for the well-rounded pianist. And uh, I love spreading knowledge throughout the world. I love that. I love that even more than, 
you know, just locking myself in a room and practicing five hours a day. I don't have time to practice five hours a day anymore like I did when I was in school. Yeah. But now my mission in life is to spread knowledge throughout the world. I think that uh, people would benefit that from that far greater than if I were a performer, you know, like a, you know, a, Valentina Lissitz, uh, or a, somebody like that who just mainly pri primarily performs. So I don't view myself as a performer necessarily anymore. I'm an educator and I make books, like huge books for your learning pleasure, like this one that I'll be talking about. So I, I spent a lot of time making books now and uh, educating the world on how to become a better pianist. That's my goal. I want to teach people how to become a better pianist. Well, thank you very much for doing that. Yeah. I know just in my life, um, through, uh, what was it, three weeks before I met you um, and came down there to start getting some of this stuff going in Piano Marvel, I, uh, I stumbled onto your sight reading in Harmony. And just from using that last three months, my sight reading has gone up. I was stuck in Piano Marvel taking the sasser at around the spot where I can't get past four-part hymns. But um, just from using that book right there that you're holding up, and I know we're going to talk about it well tempered Hannon first, but I just wanted to say the work that you do is definitely helping. And that's what I want to share today with these people. That's one of the main reasons I wanted you on was so we could show all this awesome stuff out, but let people know that this stuff really works and uh, let them know how to use it to its full potential because it is amazing. It helped me get over that gap of not being able to read um, SATV four-part style writing. And, um, and it's done it relatively quick for me. So uh, yeah, I just want to be able, like you, I didn't make this awesome stuff, but I, I want to be able to help get the word out there about this. So I view myself as trying to kind of do that, as trying to just help people use it to its full potential. Um, so thank you very much for making this. Welcome, it's, uh, it's an amazing resource. I've only gotten into two of your books so far, but I cannot wait to get into more. Well, thank you very much. And likewise, uh, um, you know, I think Piano Marvel is such an incredible website and so so many uh, uh, opportunities to learn on there that, and, and you're putting so much time, you know, I've sent you all these files to upload and, you know, you uploaded this whole book in like, uh, you know, a couple of weeks or something. And that's really incredible. So, um, you know, I mean, I mean, you, you, you do your part also, and I really thank you for that, for what you do for Piano Marvel, for, for, um, you know, for the world to learn piano. It really is a great resource. So thank, thank you for, uh, being a part of the team. Yeah, we're a pretty good team piano. together and, uh, happy to do it. I'm happy to do it. This is really cool stuff. It really gets me excited. So again, thanks for being on here. Um, with all that being said, it's looking like this live stream is up and running. It's running pretty smooth. Uh, if anyone has any questions or concerns or there is issues, um, I'm recording all this live right now. So this is not going to be something that's going to get lost. This will be released um, on the YouTube and all that kind of stuff. So uh, hopefully everything's good. I've been doing a lot of testing. It should be good, but just wanted to put that disclaimer out there that uh, this is going to be on uh, everywhere after this. So. Uh, yeah, I think I think with that being said, I'd love to jump into it if you're ready for it, Dr. Hall. Okay. Okay. You want me to talk about this new book? Yes. Let's talk about the okay. new book. Okay. So pretty much uh, almost everyone in the world is familiar with Hannon. What's the Hannon? I mean, it it is. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It is the. Uh, written. And. Um, Something just happened to my video screen too. Yeah, it's happening oh, to my video screen too. I think we dropped you, but you're back. The best and best-selling exercise book in history for it piano. Is. It's still the number one seller on Amazon in, in exercise books. Now, let me just point out that when I was growing up, you know, I started playing piano when I was seven, and I, you know, I played my share of some of these exercises, but I didn't, by no means that I play the whole book, or I don't even think I played all 20 of the exercises in part one, because I, my teachers, when I was young, didn't really stress it that much. But 
you know, I did my share of it, but I didn't play it nearly as much as, you know, all the Russian players play it. You know, they put hours a day on hand and they play the whole book. And it, okay, so I was never a huge fan of Hannon, quite honestly. <laughs> In fact, I always thought his exercises were pretty boring because they're all in key of C major and there's no black keys and there's, it just was kind of one dimensional for me. And as a piano teacher, I thought the same thing. I think, well, you know, a few of these exercises are okay for students, but then they get monotonous and they're boring. And, you know, I'd rather move on to real music. Yes, but then I yes. got, I had an epiphany earlier this year, 2019. I had an epiphany and I don't know what, you know, I get these things that just hit me. Like when I wrote sight reading in harmony, I had that epiphany, how to simplify Bach chorales for uh, educational purposes. And I had this epiphany hit me. And, you know, I'm just, I'm shocked that it had never been done before, but uh, I'm glad because I'm the first to do it. Is I, I thought, well, what would happen if Bach were living today or if Bach were living after Hannon and he wanted to take Hannon's exercises and improve upon them? Because they really are quite dry, you know. They're 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 not the most exciting things to play, really, in in this form. Okay, so I got to thinking. Well, if Bob were alive today, he would do a few things. He would do, he would probably do uh, about at least three things with them that would vastly improve them. First of all, he would write them in all the keys, like he did in the Well Tempered Clavier. So it would give pianists and organists the opportunity to practice these exercises using black keys, using different keys, minor keys, not just major keys, but all the minor keys. So I thought, well, gosh, he wouldn't just do that. You know, like taking, I'm going to take exercise two because I, you know, it's one of my, I thought I like it better than exercise number one. So the original is... I was thinking, well, Bach wouldn't have done that. Bach would have would have taken it, and he would have taken he would have taken that, but then he would have taken a, uh, he would have harmonized it in one of two ways, in thirds and sixths. So he would have taken he would have started with E on the bottom and C on the top. So. Provides a harmony of, of a sixth. Actually, it's an it's an octave and a sixth below. Now, if you invert that, invert it means to switch it upside down. A sixth. Anybody who knows their music theory and is taking counterpoint knows that if you switch a sixth upside down, it becomes a third. So then, if you take a third, then you have then you can start with the exercise its original form in the left hand and do it a third above. So so actually that's two octaves and a third. I mean you could do it also just one octave and a third. And I explained in the introduction here how you can you can if you want you can you can change the octaves if you want. Yeah. But the, the bottom line is that you would have one of, because there are only two possibilities to harmonize something. There are thirds and there are sixths. Yes. He wouldn't do yes. fourths. He wouldn't do it fifths. There's only thirds and sixths. Yes. And yes. Fifths, especially in the Baroque period. Yeah. And, and, but, and, and everybody's done unison already, the same note. In fact, they've been doing it all for over on like almost 150 years from the Hannon book. So <laughs> do we, do we really need to hear it anymore in unison? No, Bach would Bach would would think, oh, that's really boring. You know, Bach would think, oh, let's do something really interesting with it, and let's play it in thirds and sixths and make it invertible counterpoint. That's called invertible counterpoint. Thirds become six, six becomes thirds. So, so you have that, then you have, then you have that. Well, that's just the beginning, because now you have to do minor keys. 
And that's where really my favorite ones are. So you have the way this book is lined up <clears throat> is I have half the page is major, half the page is the parallel minor. And it goes so forth and so on for like 240 pages. So, so now, exercise number two in C major, now I'm going to play it in C minor. And this is very interesting because I had to manipulate a lot of the keys. Like uh, some, uh, usually I base it on the melodic minor scale. So I'll have to raise the sixth and seventh tone. And usually when it's descending, I, I it's natural minor, so I don't have to do anything with it. But every exercise is slightly different depending on the nature of the motif that's being used. So, and these motifs, by the way, are not unlike ones Bach would have used. In fact, they sound very Bachian. When I play this for you, I'm going to play all of C minor, the number two in C minor. You, you'll, you'll think to yourself, that sounds just like Bach. And because it, it is, it's the way Bach would have done it if he were living after canon. So here's C minor, exercise number two in C minor. Bravo, okay. bravo. You could put a nice little retard there at the end. And I've tacked on these little ending measures. Those are so cool. Those those go at the end of each one. Otherwise, it otherwise it would just end. Yeah. It was That's so cool, cool for you to add those. They're so you cool. Have, yeah, you have to it's like the tail that I put on at the end. So And it sounds Bachian too. It, it's very Bach. It's very. <laughs> in fact, it, this one in C minor. Whenever I play any of the exercises in C minor, I always think of the Allemand from Bach's second partita in C minor. Interesting. You know, that that one that goes like that. Okay. Um, it, it it just sounds so much like it with the writing. So when you're practicing these, you're actually preparing to play Bach. That's awesome. You're, not, you're taking hand and and you're you're redesigning it to practice to play something else. These are so good for learning how to play Bach, Bach conventions, Bach fugues, anything by Bach, and you can you can play them in any in all keys. Like like if I take if I take okay, I'm gonna take the one I just played. Oh, the one on the next page, C sharp minor. Okay. C sharp minor it has four sharps, four sharps, and I'm going to play
just played it all a half step above that. Now, when let me give you an example of how it comes in handy. By the way, you probably notice I don't play it very fast. Most people do the, the hand and they want it really fast. These, you're going to have to slow these down to about half speed because you're dealing with harmonies and you're dealing with minor keys, which are actually the best ones to work on. Yes. The one I just played in C sharp minor. Well, I'm, I have the well tempered clavier by Bach here. And I'm just going to look at a little bit of the C sharp minor few. C sharp minor few. I'm just on the second page here. Preparing to play Bach fugues oh my. by working on the hand. It is very practical. That's You're awesome. not it's not just a finger exercise. It's a brain exercise very and it's so. a healthy exercise because you want to play it, you want to get a nice tone. They sound even nice when they're played adagio. Yeah. You can play them at any speed you want. They're good for for uh, lower intermediate players, all the way up to concert artists. Yes, there's no limit to who this is appropriate for. But just as a little plug, my next book uh, after this one is is going to be after this and after my sight reading and harmony exam book, which I'll talk about. Is I'm making a canon for beginners. Oh, that's going to be a thinner volume. It's not going to be you know 250 pages. It's going to be a thinner volume for um, like sort of a primer for pianists who who want to learn this. So you know if you think oh this is just too hard for you, wait later this year I'm going to have canon for beginners. That is exciting. So, Working on that right now, and I got that idea from teaching a five-year-old. I have a five-year-old student I teach. He comes to my home once a week. Really talented, little uh, cute little Chinese kid. Very talented. Little puny hands, really small, but he's really talented. And I took. I, it's just these are too too much. Yeah. I mean, two octaves up and down, and you know, it was too much. So what I did was I wrote, I rewrote these using eighth notes instead of sixteenth notes. I only go up and down one octave instead of two. I'm actually going to, um, I'm actually going to introduce harmonies like, oh, I get here in my um, harmonies like um, that occur here in thirds and six. Yeah, the thirds and six will be in my hand and for beginners book. And uh, I got the idea because every week I print out another one for my student to learn. He's only five and he's like about this tall. And so I teach him these things. He loves the hand and exercises. And I was thinking, well, gosh, I could just make hand, a hand and for beginners book and it will prepare people to get to this book. Yes, that is so That's awesome. I bet we have a lot of people listening right now that are excited about that. Yeah. And it's gonna you don't even know about it yet. It's a surprise for you. It is a surprise but, for me, hence why I'm smiling it, ear to ear. It's right around the corner and it'll be you know, after I get the sight reading exam book done, that's gonna be my next project. And so, hand in for beginners, it's gonna be really good and useful. And it's gonna prepare students for this big book here. That is and awesome. it will be better in, at I hate to say it, but it will be better than the original hand. And so you can pretty much get rid of this, and you'll be able to use my hand in for beginners and use this, and you'll have everything you ever need from hand in to prepare to play Bach and other music. Because when you play in all white keys, it doesn't prepare you for anything. Yep. I mean, you're just playing white keys. Yep. How often, if, as a piano teacher, if I 
if I discovered, well, they can't put their thumbs on black keys because they've never been trained to play their thumb on black keys. In this way, you can you have all sorts of different fingering options. That's another thing. When you, if for for people who get this book here, um, uh, the well-tempered hand, and be be prepared for to use different fingerings. The the same fingerings aren't always going to work. That work for white keys because when you're dealing with half black keys, half white keys, sometimes it works better to avoid your thumb on black keys, or maybe you want might want to try a different fingering. And everybody's different because everyone has different fingers and different hand shapes and sizes. So my fingering, what I like, is necessarily going to be good for somebody else, and that's a good thing because it's going to open up people's minds to experiment with fingerings. And that's what I also what I say. I have like the three or four page introduction here where I have practice tips. And one of the things I point out is to experiment with fingerings. Don't just get dead set on one kind of fingering all the time for all the ones in every key, but experiment with fingerings and well, it will cause you to grow as the pianist because you need to be able to adapt to different fingerings depending on the situation. Exactly. I mean, I'm like somewhere between like an intermediate, maybe higher intermediate, maybe a little bit advanced, but I could be tooting my own horn. But in my limited time of studying piano and for four years, I that's something, and you can attest to this, you've been doing this longer than I have, that's something that you have to do when you get pieces. You have to experiment. You have to sit there and see, hey, what works well for this? Like, yes, you can play it with the two to the four, but it sounds more beautiful in Catabula if you do two to three. Like, this is exactly what you're doing in real music, is you're experimenting with different things to get the best sound. Exactly. Like, like when I take number one, uh, if I take the... You know, that's the most famous one. If I take that... And if, when I play it in C minor, there's certain places where you get a white key to a black key. Like for me, I know it's just the way I am. I feel it. Sometimes it's hard to get your fifth finger in there on the black key. Yeah. So sometimes I just go over with my third finger. I mean, yeah. sometimes it's easy. Like if you have two black keys, it's easy with four and five. But sometimes I feel a little cramped with four and five. So occasionally, depending on whether the key is white or black, I might even cross a finger over and and not. And that's very Baroque. But Baroque players did that all the time. Uh, they cross like three over four, for example. Uh, so, but it depends on the situation. Very often I'll. I have some strange fingerings uh, sometimes that I use, but that's just my own choice. So students and teachers who, who buy this book would have the opportunity to experiment with lots of different fingerings and, and uh, you know, different ways that they can practice things. And uh, you could also practice with deliberately difficult fingerings just so you can try difficult fingerings, or you try their easier fingerings, whatever works for you, works for you. But the, the, the great thing about it is you're preparing for actual music. I don't, I don't feel that hand and the, the original hand and really prepares people for real music. It's like artificial. I've always felt that when I was, I always thought, God, it's so boring. And then I had my epiphany and I thought, this is so dramatically vastly improved that, and you know, I'm not bragging or anything. I think it's really an improvement on Hannon's exercises. And it's the way Bach would have done it because Bach was a great composer. Hannon wasn't. Just face it, Hannon wasn't even a composer. He, he doesn't have any, aside from this book, he wrote almost nothing. So, so Bach has, has a hand up and over Hannon, and it's, it was my job to sort of channel in to, you know, if Bach were living now, or if he were living in the 1800s or after after uh, Hannon wrote wrote this, and like around 1870 something, if Bach were living in 1900, how he would have improved upon Hannon's book, 
And this is really what I have here is really pretty much the only possibilities that existed for Bach at the time, other than being having writing fugues. Now I didn't do that. I didn't try to write fugues <laughs> using the, the sub using these these uh, little uh, motifs. I mean that would be another good project to do. Uh, actually, for composition students, if you're interested in composition, you might want to take uh, take uh, maybe a hand in a sequence or something and try to write a fugue from it and and see what you can do with that. So Bach probably would, would, would have made fugues and canons out of them also. But the least I could do is at least harmonize them and uh, present them in a way that Bach probably would have done it. And I'm really excited about it. It's really an exciting project and I hope that it helps pianists and students and teachers out in their quest to read music well. It's great for sight reading and it's great for all aspects of uh, technical work. So with that being said, um, you know, I'm open to any questions or anything or by, from you or anybody else until I go on to talk about my next project. So Dr. Hall, I don't know if you can hear me or not. Um, I'm having a kind of hard time Hearing, I don't know if people lost you or I, or, or, um, if I lost you or you lost me. So I think I need to do a little technical um, thing. So if people can just bear with me real quick. I'm going to try to do a quick troubleshooting. Uh, if we lose okay. the feed, I'm going to get us back going. But can you hear me, Dr. Hall? I can. Oh, okay. yeah, perfect. Okay. So I'm going to just stop us for a sec. We may have to retrack. I don't know if people have been hearing you or not, but I'm going to. I'm going to get my phone up and try to see if I can get us going. So I'm sorry if there's technical difficulties, but people, this is a new setup, but we're going to try to get things going real quick. So just give me a couple minutes. Uh, if we lose you, we'll get right back on great. here. We have a lot more we'd like to talk about. Okay, great. Excellent. Okay, sorry for the delay, everyone. Um, computers can be sometimes a little difficult, but I got us back up and running, and I can hear Dr. Hall. Dr. Hall, are you there? Yes, I am. So mm -hmm. I was I was told, I'm so glad to hear your voice. <laughs> so I was told everyone could hear you uh, even when I was having problems. So um, I'm looking at those comments right now. Um, and if anyone couldn't have heard anything or they have any questions, please let us know. I'm monitoring the comments as we speak. Um, okay. But we shouldn't have to go over anything you were saying. Uh, but I'd love to hear like a, a couple, a condensed version real quick so I know where you left off so we can continue okay. this thing. Well, I, I want to just get just a just a, a little um, addition to what I was saying. Of course, the the book is called the Well Tempered Hannon. Mm -hmm. Hannon, the way Bach would have done it. Yes. And it's as I speak, it's it's June nineteenth as we're making this this live stream. It's not for sale yet. Yes, right? it's not. So it will probably be about a week from now. I'm putting finishing touches on the final proof. Uh, I have some, re some slight revisions to make and stuff, but when I'm done with that, I'll send it in to my uh, printer and distributor, and then it will be for sale. So it should be probably in a week from the time I'm saying this. So it's it's uh, it's nearing completion right now. Uh, luck, you know, it's been several months in the works, so I've spent a lot of time on it. So that's what I wanted to add. Thank you for adding that. Uh, in the meantime, if people want to use it, it is in Piano Marvel, and I was going to do a whole demonstration and show how it works. I could probably show a little bit of the screen, but it doesn't look nearly as pretty, so I don't know if I'm going to right now. Uh, oh, but this is incredible, the way it works. It you is. It, it works really, really well in Piano Marvel, just like your sight reading and harmony exams do. So I'd really urge uh -huh. some people to go check it out there in the meantime before they buy it. And while we're talking about buying stuff, um, this is by no means like, hey, Corey did this for me, so I need to tell everyone to go buy his stuff. I urge you to, like, especially, especially the sight reading and harmony exams. If, if you're out there doing the exams, you're not really using them the way that they're, they're, you're supposed to, at least as far as I'm aware. What do you think, Dr. Hall? Do you think that they can just use the exams and that's how they were intended? Well, I think you need to be ready to take the exams. Don't uh, use the exams to practice on. I would I would suggest, if, if you're new to it, get Sight Reading and Harmony, either the complete edition that looks like this or one of the um, 
one of the sight reading only editions, which are thinner volumes of uh, particular grades. And work your way through part four of this book, part four, uh, or the whole books of the sight reading only edition. Yes. Once you've done that and you've put in your due diligence to really working on it for at least six months, yes. um, at the very minimum six months for your grade level, then you're ready to start doing the exams. Then you can go on Piano Marvel and, and start really trying to take the exams. And, you know, you can get your grade on Piano Marvel and your certificate that you get on Piano Marvel. And um, I would suggest that. Yes. So there's, there's a definite steps, definite steps involved. First, do this, then go to the exams. Yes. I cannot say anything but do that. <laughs> to everyone watching this, it's very, very crucial. Just doing the exams are not going to make you a sight reader. Um, doing it all the time and doing it methodically, and I'm talking about sight reading when I say it, that's what makes you um, excel. And for me, I got stuck, like I was mentioning earlier, I got stuck at like a six, 700 level, which is like beginning to do four part harmony. And so when I found these um, sight reading and harmony exams, I, that's why I think I've been flying through them is because I was kind of doing them, but I was doing them not as great as I needed to be. And so being able to focus on two lines and then two lines simultaneously and then three lines, like it's very methodical and you're doing 150 exams in each grade. So I mean, I worked my way through it pretty quickly, but like I said, I, I'm not starting at, I, I had, I've played piano for a little bit. So um, anyways, all I'm trying to say is I really think that these are super, super valuable, but it, they're not gonna be of any value at least not as much value as they would be without using that book. And that book you can buy as a hard copy, which I have lying around here somewhere to match yours. Uh, or you can buy a PDF version, which I also have. Both are great. If you have an iPad, you can just stick the iPad up there and just go through it. Right. Yeah, it works great. I mean, it's, uh, um, you know, the, the many people have both. Actually, they have a hard copy and an iPad for if they're away or something, or if they want to just work with an iPad, like an iPad Pro works really well for them. Yes, yes. Yeah. I wish I had the big so, iPad Pro to look at it. It'd look real cool. <laughs> or the big now. <laughs> yeah. They keep getting big. I know. Hopefully, one day they're going to be huge. You can't see my hands, but yeah. Um, okay, so I'm glad we talked about that. Uh, we talked about the well-tempered Hannon and how it's going to be released soon, uh, which is you're thinking the tentative date is about a week out from now? Yeah, probably about a week out from now. And yeah. then we also talked about in the last video about a, uh, which is really exciting, people that may be having a hard time with Well-Tempered Hannon, which I'd love to talk, touch on in a second, but if they're having a hard time on it, whether they're in Piano Marvel or not in Piano Marvel, uh, you're going to be releasing a new book um, that you were talking about. Yeah. Hannon for beginners. Yes, which is very exciting. And who knows, maybe one day we can get that in Piano Marvel. I mean, I'd, I think uh, I'd love to have it, but that's something we have to talk about oh. together off. Oh, it'll be, if you could, if it took you two weeks to get this in there, it'll take you like half a day to get this. <laughs> well, I'd love to do <laughs> yeah. it. I know that um, it'd be great to have people on there, uh, whether they're new to the piano and they're, um, like five-year-old kids, like what you teach, like when the student you are talking about teaching, or whether they're uh, late, late adult beginner, uh, beginners, like kind of like I was a few years ago. So um, I think that's really cool that you're making that. I'm excited. It's good. So there, there's been other, you know, there, there are other hand and uh, sort of uh, primer hand and books. I don't know if it, they're, they're not called hand and for beginners. They have different titles, but there are some. You know, Faber has one. I've seen other. My wife has one from another publisher from like the 60s. So it's not a new concept to make an, an sort of an easy hand in book. But the reason why, but mine is different. Yes, it's by you and it's going gonna, it's gonna to get them into the well-tempered hand in. Right, because I'm going to include harmonizations in there in thirds and sixths. And I'm only using one octave instead of two. And there all the scales and stuff. That's not all going to be in there because be, beginners don't need all that stuff. Yeah. You know, but actually this Hannon book, most people, most pianists only use, they buy the whole Hannon book. They end up only playing like, you know, 10 pages. If that. 
if that. I got I got caught up around hand in exercise number two because I didn't know where I'm supposed to stop and where I'm supposed to start. You know, like, I mean, you could play it super fast or you could go quieter and try to be really good on all velocity and have everything be singing and not have one note kind of just jump yeah. out, you know? So um, I think, yeah, it's really cool having yours. And I mean, having it in Piano Marble for that, uh, while we're on that point, it's really cool because you have five different tempi to choose from and it goes from uh, beginner piano to uh, concert level so I mean the stuff that I've done on Piano Marvel I haven't gone past the third speed I mean I'm kind of staying at the third speed and then I'm going to just like the beginner and I'm doing all of the stuff that's transposed too I'm not just doing C major and I'm doing random exercises too um, yeah. But yeah, it's not all about speed. It's more about that brain exercise like you talked about and really trying to learn stuff and challenge yourself and um, yeah, just get better and feeling different keys. Hey, let, me, let me show you a technique. Now, I um, mentioned this in the preface here. Okay, it's a great for sight reading. Here's, here's what you do. This is, there's so many exercises in here because they're in all keys. There are so many. Yes. It'll take you over a lifetime to play them all. So here's what you do. Say you want to practice your sight reading skills, close your eyes, just, just select the page, <laughs> open it up, okay? Ah, oh, I just, this is exercise number eight, B flat minor. Oh, that's the one okay. that I told you that I'm having a hard time with. Oh. oh. Let me try, and I've never played this. I'm sight reading this, so let me try. Amazing. My student, so, my student just uh, commented on our video. She said, wow, he is good. <laughs> okay, I've never played that before. And, and so look, I, I wrote this book, but by no means have I like played every single one and every single key. Of course. Okay, because I'm, I'm spending my time on formatting and you know, stuff like yeah. that. So, but, but what you do is if you want to practice your sight reading skills, close your eyes every day. Open it up to a new page, just at random. Close your eyes, open it up to a page, and just choose. There's four options on each. You can choose choose either either the major, the minor, the major, or the minor. I just happen to choose the minor because I love the minor keys. Yeah. Um, and you just do that. Every single day, you just open up the book blindly to a new page, and you just try one. Yeah. That's the best way. That's the best way to really work on your sight reading skills. Well, and on that point, if you don't mind me saying, I remember I talked to you a couple weeks ago, and you said to me something that I thought was uh, worth mentioning here, which is um, you don't intend for anyone to play this sequentially through, like from start to no, beginning. No, I, and that's what I also point that out in my preface here. If Okay, the, the normal handed book, I mean, you know, it's common for virtuosi, you know, people who, you know, Russian pianists who spend all day practicing these. It's very common for them to go through all 20. Now, at a, at a, and I, I timed, I actually calculated it with a calculator um, to play all 20 of them in from the original Hannon book, all 20 of them from beginning to end at a tempo of 84 beats per minute which was box standard Allegro, 84 beats per minute. And here it would take 
about six, uh, was it about 14, like 14 minutes or something, okay? For only 14 or so minutes to play all 20 in okay. here. Play this whole book at the same speed, I calculated it out. It would take, um, like, I, I have it written down, like, you know, 12 hours. Oh, my goodness. It would take, like, half a day or something. Yeah. I have it. I forgot what the number is. But nobody... Nobody can possibly do that. Well, you, you could, I mean, but it would be just I, such a waste of time. Well, I'd like to see it. I'd, like, I'd, I'd love it to see somebody do a world's record. <laughs> when I have this published, I'd like to see, in fact, I'd, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see somebody just sit down and play the whole book from beginning to end. Oh, my gosh. And, and like, I bet there will be people trying to do that because... This it'll make this look. This is like child, <laughs> and, and and this like if you can play that, nobody can play this whole book all from beginning to end. So that's a good thing because because it'll give you something the rest of your life that you can do to work. Yes, every day for the rest of your life you can learn a new one. I mean you'll never get sick yes. of them. Yes, yes, yes. You'll never get tired of them. Where if you do the original. Oh, you get tired of them. You think, oh, th this is monotonous. Yes. It's, it's not even interesting. But then these, they actually have harmony to it, and they, they sound musical. Yes. And and uh, I, I, I love it. And I, they sound even better slow almost. Yeah, I really can't. I mean, you've said it. I've said it. I cannot stress that enough to our people watching this, whether they're doing it in uh, through your website and just with the hard copy book or through Piano Marvel, like, Doing it slow is so good, and since I'm the, since I heard you say that I don't need to go chronologically, I have given myself the leeway to do it at speeds that I can do. I do it right hand separate, the left hand separate, and then hands together. And even if I just do it slow, hands together, I'm happy because that's a major brain thing, and it really is hard to do that. But it's so beneficial. I feel like. Yeah, it is definitely okay. I just turned it to exercise number eleven. Um, and I'm going to choose uh, C sharp minor, exercise number 11. 11, here we go. Exercise number 11, and um, I think that's my natural kind of sight reading speed I gravitate towards. Everybody will be different. Yes. Depends on, you know, a, a total beginner might want to, uh, you know, do something like that, which is fine. So you can do it any way you want, but anything you do is going to help your reading skills, especially because all... 24 major and minor keys. It's all there. It's, it's going to prepare you for the well-tempered clavier. Bum. Yes, it's preparing for so much. It really is. It's it's really, it's awesome. And I'm so happy that it's out and it's coming out now. It's like the perfect time because I'm nearing the end of sight reading and harmony and the exams. Okay. So it's like, this is perfect to like start. I don't know. I just, I mean, so excited. So thank you so much. <laughs> In the software there for the, the um, SASR Sasser yes. uh, software and that whole program on Piano Marvel, it's really incredible because, you know, you can just put it on the appropriate tempo for yes. you, the base level. Yes. And, um, you know, I, I have, I chose 
gradations of Tempe yes. based on based on um, exact proportions and also based on uh, box Tempe that he that he most likely used based on my research. So um, I think it's very very helpful. And you know what's interesting is sight reading in harmony is you learn to read vertically. Yes. You read to read soprano, alto, tenor, bass in a vertical fashion. This is more horizontal. Mm -hmm. So it actually uh, serves as a good complement to sight reading and harmony. Yeah. So if you want to practice your sight reading skills in a horizontal fashion, then this is the book for you. If you want to do it, practice your sight reading chords and in a vertical fashion, it's sight reading and harmony. So they kind of go together. So and, I got a question on that. I was thinking about that the other day. I was thinking about how when I sight read hymns, they're getting better because I've been using sight reading and harmony and harmony and exams uh, and leveling up through using Piano Marble after I go through the entire grade eight in sight reading and harmony exam, sight reading and harmony, then I go take my quiz and if I get a 90 and up, then I go to level nine. So anyways, I've been doing all that and I've been getting better and I've noticed great progress in my four part reading. But I was thinking the other day, like, hey, when I go do, try to play stuff kind of fast, like, and it's, Easier stuff to sight read. Some people, like I've heard Dr. Josh Wright say, um, some like Mozart sonatas can kind of be, not all Mozart sonatas, I know that they're, some are insane, but some are easier just because you're only worrying about two things. You're worrying about a left hand that's doing like a chord and a right hand that's doing a melody. So like, it almost seems like what you said, the hand in it is gonna like help with that kind of horizontal reading. Is that correct? Yeah, it does. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, like I said, you know, when I, demonstrated the Bach fugue earlier. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 um, the sequences in the fugue were very much like some of the sequences you'll, you'll, you'll hear in the C-sharp minor exercises in this book. Oh, that's awesome. And, and um, you know, like I said earlier, when I, whenever I play in C minor, and I think a good key to start with is C minor because a lot of people are used to playing these in C major, the ones who know them already. Yes. So I would suggest C minor. I would suggest just sticking with C minor for a while, for for a while, and just try out several exercises in C minor first, and then branch out from there. Try to go to different keys after that. But I love uh, I love C minor. It's just a great key to play in because. Of also the range it is in the piano, it's not too high, not too low, and uh, I love C minor and and I love C sharp minor probably because they were the first couple ones in each example, and those are the ones I usually try out first. Gotcha. When I I was you know making the book, so um, C minor great key. You should learn learn a, a few of them or if not all of them in C minor first and. Focus on minor. I love minor. And major is good, too, but we've all heard them already in major keys. But they're good when they're harmonized in major keys, but they're so much better even in minor. It's like a, it's like they're for connoisseurs. <laughs> the, the minor keys are like, that's like the, you know, the, you know, the finely aged cheese or wine or whatever <laughs> it is. You know, that's like the, that's like the, the essence. Yes, of it. yes. We can sip our brandy and play the, uh, the <laughs> play them in minor. So you mentioned something there that I just want to stress too real quick, because I remember you saying in our talks that um, playing, um, playing lots of different exercises are good, playing random ones are good. You would recommend that not just going chronologically and not trying to play the whole thing chronologically, uh, but that's a challenge to whoever wants to do it. Uh, <laughs> but um, I'll pay, I'll pay them a million dollars. No, just. <laughs> but you did <laughs> mention something there that's very important. You said, don't just play in C major, and you didn't say it exactly like that. But I, I would love to hear you just expound on that really quick, if you can. I feel like oh, your yeah. thoughts on this whole no. thing are just don't only okay. stick in C major. Okay, C major. We all for people who, okay, for for pianists who don't have never played any of these hands then you need to start with C yes. major. That's where they all start. For pianists um, that are familiar with them, have played several already in C major and want to branch out and do something different, don't just play all of these in C major. I mean, uh, you know, you could, 
I, I would fo try to focus on different keys other than C major because that's part the main reason I wrote this book was to get away from just C major. Now, C major is always going to be the first one in every, like, we have number 11. Well, C major is the first one there, but, you know, I mean, you can, you know, it's, I, C minor is so much more exciting. <laughs> and it's like, it's you like know. the fine wine of, like, hand and action. <laughs> okay, you know. That's okay, but it has a whole different character it's to like it. It's like somber. And also when you get into these naturals, the you know, and I had to add naturals there, and so it's it's actually a little bit tricky when I was working these out in minor keys that's why in my final revision i'm doing this week i'm there there are a few of them where i'm slightly changing the sixth and seventh tones because they sound better I, I i'm hearing them differently now so it takes a while for them to sink in actually and i've been working on the final revisions for the uh when i'm going to put in sharps and flats and when i'm not going to put in sharps and flats gotcha so it, it actually, that's where my experience as a composer and an arranger really comes in handy because not anyone could do yes, that. Yes, you have to know theory. I mean, you have to know it. Any, anyone can write them and can transpose them into the major yes. keys. Computer systems can not, do that for you. Yeah, but not anybody can do them in the minor no. keys. That actually takes for, that takes human brains to do that. <laughs> Takes human brains to play and even more human brains to make. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, good. So does anybody have any questions? You anything? just read my mind. Are you reading my mind right now? So Amy Staver said, are all of the scales and arpeggios included in the Hannon book? And do you recommend us reviewing the scale for each key prior to doing the exercises? Or by okay. the intermediate level, should we already know those by heart? Okay, uh, the first question is no, they're not included in here. And probably the reason is because it was long enough already and, you know, the book would have become too expensive for that, yeah. you know, more pages. And they're, they're in here anyway, the scales and arpeggios. But it, you don't really need, I mean, it's good to know your key signatures and it, your major and minor scales, at least one octave. I mean, you don't have to rip them off four octaves up and down the keyboard. That's really not going to help you any. If you can play your major and minor scales, major and the three forms of minor scales, natural, harmonic, and melodic, if you can just play them all at a... Uh, If you can play every scale about at that speed, then that's all you really need. And Amy, just getting to your so, point real quick, and I'm sorry to cut you off, but this is this is important. Okay. Those scales that you just talked about, those are in the sight reading and harmony. So yes, they're not in the Hannon, but if you buy the sight reading and harmony book, you have done that up to four accidentals out. Right. Um, in the yeah. sight reading and harmony, and I was doing that for a while. My practice sessions. That's something that you recommend in the preface. Which sidebar? The prefaces that you that you talk about are so important, and we're kind of touching on them today. But I urge everyone to read those prefaces because they're very very helpful. But um, yeah, Amy, those those um, you can get a lot of those scales, and also amazing diatonic chords, and even a little bit of chromaticism. If I remember, I know inversions. They're also in the sight reading and harmony book too. So. And they're really, when I'm, yeah, I, exactly, exactly. But when you're playing one of these, like number 11, whatever speed you're going to do it at, it's really, quite honestly, not really your ability to play the scales isn't necessarily going to really help you that much. Yeah. So I don't think scales and arpeggios are really relevant to the Hannon. That's why one of my complaints about the original Hannon was his inclusion of scales. I, I think he, you know, you don't, 
you have hooks for scales already. You don't need them in Yeah, here. everywhere has them. So, you can find them online for free. Yeah. We have them in our site. You, I mean, everyone has yeah. them. So I don't, I don't think it's necessary to answer your question. I think you can do these without really knowing your scales and arpeggios, although that is helpful because you need to know your key signals. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Is there another? Um, yeah. So I hope that answers your question. I, I think it does. Thank you for answering that. Um, so I got another thing in here, and um, I think it's just someone just kind of saying, awesome job. She said, I just fell into this live event. Thanks for this, and I totally agree about the Hannon. So I'm not sure if that was talking about you uh, saying what the Hannon's downfalls are, or you talking about this Hannon. But that oh, was she Ellen. Probably would agree that, that this book gets pretty boring. <laughs> that this one is a huge improvement. She probably was saying that. <laughs> it really is though, and I'm so excited to start using it more. Like, like I've said already, like a million times this live stream, like. I have improved so, so much because of sight reading and harmony. And I know that your stuff is really good. I, I've seen it work for me. So I'm excited to start using this more because I know that it's going to work. And I mean, I'm already getting some benefit from it. And I never really did the hand that much because right. I was a self -start student, student for a while and my teachers never made me do it. So I'm so excited. I keep, you know, that one of the things I do, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in my element when I get an epiphany I, 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 and these things happen to me sometimes. I get epiphanies like, oh, I've got the perfect book. And then I'll draft it out like, you know, my hand for beginners. And, you know, I, you can go and check out the Box Scholar publishing catalog, which you can find on the Box Scholar website. And you can see all the things that are planned. Oh, nice. So, yes. Everyone should go check I out his a website. Whole, a whole boatload of, it's a free uh, catalog, free Box Scholar publishing catalog, and it has all, all things that, that I got ideas for. I have the title pages, I have the ideas, and I'll be working towards those in the next few years. So, it's a process, but my goal and my strength is to help pianists with, with original books that will help them in their quest to become a better pianist. Like, for example, I have a book, you know, maybe in the next year or two on polyrhythms. Oh. It's going to teach, it's going to teach pianists how to play two against three, three against four, three against five, all those things that they often have problems yes, with. Yes, so hard to do. And that, that's one example where, where there are virtually no books that exist on how to play polyrhythms. Yes. Well, that's why I'm making these because I want to fill gaps in the in in in, in the literature, and I want to help pianists out. So, so uh, one thing I do is I come up with these. I I brainstorm on ideas that original, innovative ideas that will help out pianists. That's awesome. And you know, the sight reading and harmony was just one example. That was like my flagship <laughs> publication, but. There will be more. You know, my next one is the Hannon book. You know, I got, you know, the Polyrhythm book will come out sometime. So, you know, I'm always, my mind is always working to bring these things to people. Uh, that's why, uh, that's why I haven't made a lot of YouTube videos lately because I'm busy here in my laboratory <laughs> working things out to help become better pianists. Making the, uh, the minor finely aged cheese hand and exercises. Exactly, exactly. I don't have time to sit here for four hours and practice the piano anymore. So in my free time, I come up brainstorm with ideas on books. Well, the books are awesome. I'm so honored to be able to play them. I'm so honored to be able to talk to you and learn about how to use them better. And it's so awesome to have them and that you are just sharing that information with us and it's, I'm so excited for the future of what you're going to do and share, making more. And um, I mean, I think I speak for all, everyone at Piano Marvel that we would love to get more stuff in there. Um, and that your stuff is awesome. And if people have not checked it out yet in Piano Marvel, um, they should check it out. And if they're going to start using them, uh, they should really you know, consider buying the book as well because it, it helps so much. I'm sending you more stuff, by the way, like the Jingle Bells Through the Grades with Jingle Bells Rag. Oh, yes. 
up for Christmas. Yes. So there'll be some more stuff coming on there, Hannon for Beginners, when that comes out. So so everybody who's listening, just go on Piano Marvel. Uh, if, you, if you're viewing this YouTube video, you know, the link's below here to my video. And find appropriate links to for discounts and things like and that. Yeah, and so. speaking of discounts, if you go on to Piano Marvel and you want to sign up and get a discount, if you use the discount code BACH, B-A-C-H, that will actually get you, I think, what is it, Dr. Hall, a $2 discount for students? $2. Yeah, $2. And I think it may be, I heard the other day from one of my colleagues that it's an $8 discount on the annual price. Um, oh, really? Oh, that's great. I Excellent. think. Don't quote me, but I heard that. So I, I heard it through a grapevine. I could be right, could be wrong, but it's, it came from a credible source. So, but All yeah, right. if anyone wants to um, get a Piano Marvel account, you can try it for free. Three of the sight reading and harmony exams are free. So you, if you've just came here from Dr. Hall's YouTube site and you have his book, but you don't, you're like exploring, like, hey, maybe Piano Marvel could be helpful. You can try it for free and just, and it's really cool if you have a, a digital piano to see your score and know, hey, I got a 90% or better. Like you having a computer tell you. So um, I really like that. Uh, but yeah, uh, your books are amazing. You can get discounts, but. Your, your material is awesome. So thank you again. Oh, thank thank you, you again. Oh, thank you very much. It's my pleasure uh, to, uh, to make books for everyone and to, uh, to uh, teach and disseminate uh, knowledge throughout the world. And it's great. So my pleasure. Well, yeah. thank you very much. I'm going to check real quick just to make sure no one else has any more questions. And if not, unless you have anything else you'd like to talk about, I may just, uh, we may be done. No. Oh, okay. Unless you have something no. else that you'd like to talk about. I see a notification, though, so I think we may have someone else asking questions. Oh, here we go. Ellen again, the person who said, I totally agree about Hannon. She said, <coughs> excuse me, I bet you enjoyed writing these in different keys. I used to play all 20 every day, and I used to play them in different keys to keep myself from the monotony. Oh, that's great. But... Did you do them in all the minor keys? Oh, that's a good question. Ellen, did you do them in all the minor keys? Yeah, you have to do them in minor keys, not just major. Minor keys are hard, too, like we've talked about in this live stream. It's, it's not for the faint of heart, but Dr. Hall has graciously transposed them for us, uh, which is good because it would be hard to do. So if I can just ask like a theory question right now while we wait for Ellen's yeah. answer. Um, is there an easy answer to why we, you weren't able to just do like the harmonic minor? Like, is there like weird dissonances if you just choose like a harmonic well, minor? Yeah, there is. That's a good question, actually, because um, here, here's, here's the deal. You have, uh, as those who know their minor scales, well, I'm going to play C minor, C, C melodic minor. Okay. It has an, an A natural, B natural going yes, up. Yes, yes. And then B flat, A flat going down. Now, usually we're taught as piano students that the harmonic minor is the most common one yes. used. But actually, actually, that's not true. In Bach, Bach's music, Bach usually most often re, uh, resorted to the melodic minor form. Interesting. So, I take number two. I'm going to take number two again. That makes sense. And, That's cool. Okay. And so what happens is this: when 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 it's ascending, okay, I have three flats, three flats. Okay. Now, now I have to natural that B. Natural that A because it wouldn't, you know, you know, Bach wouldn't have done harmonic minor. He would have, and then what? Then I have to flat the B again because to avoid to avoid that. See, Bach Bach rarely used augmented seconds oh so it's all about the the rules of um okay 
Right. So augmented seconds are very rare. Bach probably wouldn't have done that very often. Occasionally it can happen, but I want to avoid the harmonic. The, the harmonic minor usually doesn't work. Um, so you have to be careful on if it's descending. Usually you'll it, you'll have to flat. You'll have to flat the seventh, sixth, and seventh again when you're going down. Gotcha. But but if you look at number three, now it's interesting because exercise number three is very much similar, but it's a little bit different. Exercise number three goes instead of going. It does. It twists up instead of down. Uh -huh. So so. So in this case, I would not, I wouldn't flat the B again in number three, yes. but I would number two. Uh -huh. As number two goes, but number three goes. Yes, that makes sense. So number three in that same measure, yes. in the same bar, and number two, I'm using a flat. And number three, I'm using a natural. Now, when it goes down, after you ascend all the way, now, when you're at the top and you're descending, pretty much it's all natural minor. Gotcha, OK. So you're not, you're not going to flat or sharp or natural anything going down. So when you're. When you're descending, it's pretty much all, except for maybe the first measure, it's going to be natural minor. When you're ascending, it's going to be usually the melodic, following the melodic minor. Oh, man. And, and what's interesting is when it descends, you know, like the last time it descends, when it's in, in tense, it goes... Like it's in a major key because it's in natural minor, which C minor is the same as E flat major. Yes. So sometimes you think it sounds kind of like it's an E flat major. Like if you play the one in E flat major, the same exercise in E flat major and then play it in C minor, it, there, there are big similarities yes. between them, yes. actually. But the, the tricky thing about arranging these is I had to really listen carefully to the altered tones because sometimes you have to avoid um, tritones are rare. Yes. So you want to, but they're not. They're not. I mean, there are some tritones, but sometimes they don't sound right. Yes. So I had to rely on theory, the way Bach would have done it, and I had to rely on just my own ear and what sounds more logical. Yes. Voice leading the rules out the yazoo. <laughs> all a little bit different. That's what I did with this, with this final revision. Is I actually, I got the book and I played through a bunch of them. I thought I've, I've got a, some of them I, I was raising the six and seven when I didn't want to raise them. They did, didn't sound right anymore to do that. So I'm I was listening to it differently and it, it's it's pretty tricky. It's pretty tricky. I mean, it's not as easy as you think. And I, I spent, it's almost like I want to pull my hair out sometimes because I'll play it one way and then the next day I'll add a flat and I'll say, well, does that sound better or does it sound worse? And then the next day I'll do it, a different, I'll do the without a flat. And I'll say, well, maybe I like that better. And so <laughs> I, I'm just doing my best. Well, <laughs> thanks for giving us that insight. I've tried to write music a couple, a few times. That's why I kind of got into music. And uh, I feel like I've had that same kind of thought before, not with trying to get voice leading things this complicated, but I feel like you'll, in art, you'll do one thing and then you'll love it, but then you listen to it 10 minutes later and you're just like, that's horrible. What was I thinking? So it's, uh, yeah. it's funny to hear yeah, that. Yeah, it's really, so that, that is, and it's a really good question, though. It's sort of a mix between melodic and harmonic, but melodic minor is used much more frequently in Bach uh -huh. than, 
than the harmonic minor, really, and uh, which is because there are more options, there are more notes involved in it. So there, the harmonic vocabulary is much richer when you're using melodic minor than harmonic minor. Gotcha. But there is some harmonic minor, and I mean the going from measure to measure. If I do this, that's actually going from measure to measure. That's actually harmonic minor. If you take first note of each measure, oh, okay, that goes up. And that's one of the things I was debating about because I first I I had some several of them. Actually melodic, but so I was going. Do I like that one better, or, or do I like that one? Yeah. Better? Oh my God. And I was like, I was going. I'm I'm gravitating towards the first one, so I'm changing some of these now to reflect that. I just think it sounds more natural. That yeah. Way. For what it's worth, I thought it so, did too. <laughs> So I'm, I'm like, uh, but it's, it's, uh, I was almost ripping my hair out <laughs> but, uh, because it, it, it's tricky. You really, need, you need, you need to know a lot of theory. You need to know your history, like what Bach would have done. And you have to have a good ear. Yes. And it's not easy to do, actually. Some people might think, oh, this is easy. You just push transpose and transpose in all keys. Well, yeah, the major ones are easy, but the minor ones are tricky. Yes. Oh, man. So, but, but they're fun to play, and they sound great. Yes, they do. I, I, I love the minor ones. So anyway, El that's... Uh, Ellen got back to us. She said um, she actually did do them in minor keys as well. And then uh, she also said, but she never did them in tenths and sixths. She did them in all three different forms. Um, but never harmonize them. She says, I was pretty compulsive. <laughs> okay, well, she'll love the harmonizations. I mean, that, oh my the gosh, harmoniz yes. harmonizations give it a whole new twist. I mean, they, it turns what so can be a little monotonous into something that really has substance. Yes. The, the harmonizations really have substance. You, you just, you know, I can only do so, play so many of these, but... When I have these harmonized and all the keys, I could play them all day. Yeah. I love to just sit here and just play, play this. I could play this. Uh, I could do that all day long. And it's it's so it's so good for working on stuff. I mean, at my point of where I'm at for a piano pianist, uh, reading two different things at the same time. Like, this is hard for me. I couldn't do it. I have to separate the hands. But, I mean, I don't know. I feel like for the level that you're at, I mean, is that very beneficial? I feel like that would be immensely beneficial for you, just, like, reading through. Well, if you want to be really experimental, you could try uh, a little bitonality. Oh. I, like, C sharp. I'm going to play the right hand of C sharp minor and the left hand of C minor. Okay. Hand of one and the left hand of another. Oh my gosh. And that's like, well, you can do that with scales. You can take like, yeah. a, I can play D flat major in the left hand, and I can play D major in the yes. right hand. <laughs> or you can D, D flat major in the right, D major in the left. <laughs> it's so crunchy. Yeah, crunchy. <laughs> yeah. That's called bitonality. 
for anybody that doesn't know. That is That's awesome. Cool. All right, I'm trying to see if anyone else, oh, here we go. Ellen has got back to us. Thank you, Dr. Corey. Did you ever try them where one hand is in duple and one is in triple? So polyrhythm, uh, two against three. Uh -huh. But you'd have to omit some notes in the left hand. Yeah, you'd have to like write a whole lot of Bachian stuff or something. Instead of doing this, instead of going, I'm going. Oh. So I'm going. actually three against four that's four in the right hand three against four in the right hand and three in the left hand so four against three so Like in the fantasy and promise that, that is, uses for. I actually just heard so, that today, and it's it's oh my gosh, it's uh, uh yeah. No, yeah, there's many different uh, um, there's possibilities. Are That's endless. awesome. I mean, the possibilities are endless. You can just Emily, uh, you can just get this book and and you can make things up to your heart's content. <laughs> and there's there's probably many. You can write a few if you want to try to write a few. You can take some of these and try to write a fugue on them. So there's definitely diff more possibilities from what I've done. That definitely. Yeah, that's a good idea. Actually. Yeah, that actually. is awesome. So I don't see. Oh, she said, oh, here we go. That was cool. I love polyrhythms and it could be a fun way to introduce the concept. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, maybe when I have my polyrhythm book yeah. on how, how to play and practice polyrhythms, uh, I might include some of that in there. There you go, Alan. Yeah. Now you know. Now it's a good idea. Yeah, that's cool. We could make like a uh, well-tempered Hannon, but like super crazy version, like a crunchy version that has everything harmonized, like you were talking about, yeah. and, and polyrhythms, like the super advanced well-tempered Hannon or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's... You also do octaves, you know. Uh... Oh my gosh, that would be so hard. Yeah, lots of different things. You can do. <laughs> All right, let's see if she got anything back for us. Wow, okay. here we go. I think she said something. Uh, Lachlan, great team up. Love both you guys. Both of you guys has helped to the piano world. Lachlan, thank you so much. That's so awesome to hear that. I'm honored to hear that, and uh, yeah, it's cool. And we wouldn't be half of where we are without all this awesome stuff that. Dr. Hall has given to us. It's so cool. It's game changing. I think it's it's uh, really cool to have that in Piano Marvel. So thank you, Lachlan. You're welcome. You're very welcome. And uh, so uh, that's about it, right? I think. I mean, unless I mean, people have gotten really active lately. So unless people keep saying stuff, then I'm good. I mean, you're probably hungry. I don't know. I, I was gonna say I don't know what time it is, but we're both in Florida, so it's not like it's not. I, I I have something cooking in the kitchen, but it's in a slow cooker, so it can just sit there all night. You know? Yes. Uh, I think I think we're good. I'm not, oh, hold on. I just saw something come in. Actually, I had a teacher at Juilliard that could would play Chopin waltzes in thirds. Yes, the thirds was just in the right hand. Uh, the thirds in just the right hand. It's sort of, it sort of remember her playing hand in thirds in each hand. Oh, she was oh. harmonizing them in each hand. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. Well, I can do that, maybe. I'm not going to attempt that. But... <laughs> We've already had you do so much, though. So we don't need you to do that. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there's all those stories like the people that, you know, um, you know, like I, you know, they, people that could play the whole well-tempered clavier in every single key, you know, what? that kind of, 
Oh, yeah. There's all kinds of stories, you know, like that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I've heard stories where, like, um, people getting into, like, conservatories, they were said that someone sat them down and said, and they picked this at random. They're just like, hey, play Pathetique and a major i don't even know what pathetique's in i think it's in c minor i don't know but c sharp minor but they said yeah just like play it in a random key and like he's like i got in because of parlor tricks like i could transpose stuff like on this on the uh fly how, how do you just play a beethoven sonata in any key right? i don't know like, that's it could just be a wives tale but it's, it seems way over my head or why my favorite one of my favorite stories is uh rudolf serkin the great pianist who i used to have his records when i was a kid and Rudolf Serkin, this is a true story, actually, I think. Um, you know, he gave a huge concert, like a bunch of Beethoven sonatas or something, and then he came out to do an encore. You know what he played for his encore? What did he play? The, the, all the complete Goldberg variations. Oh, my gosh. For an encore. Oh, my gosh. I'm pretty sure it was Rudolf Serkin who did that. Oh. Oh um, my I, gosh. I heard that before, you know, I thought that's, you know, like Horowitz comes out and plays the Troymeri. Yes. You know, and then, you know, that's that's doable, you know, the Troymeri yeah. or some short, you yes. know, Claire Loon maybe a little bit longer, but the Goldberg variation. That's crazy. And was it memorized or did he read it? I've seen people do uh, both. No, it was all memorized and I think he even did repeats. <laughs> That's like an hour and a half long. Oh so. my gosh! Speaking of that, didn't you just do a whole thing on your um, on your YouTube channel, which everyone should go check out? Didn't you do a, a yeah. thing on Goldberg variations on your YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah. I I have a complete performance from 2009 of the Goldberg variations on YouTube, and I have several ones I did in the last few months, just some selections from the Goldberg variations. But I have I'm doing actually a the reason I did that was I'm doing a tutorial series on the well-rounded pianist Nice. for members of the well-rounded pianist on the Goldberg Variations based on an article that I had published on the Goldberg Variations. So um, I'm doing, it's it's ongoing right now. I have a whole bunch of super slow videos on, pretty soon I'll have all of the Goldberg Variations super slow with an overhead view. And I have, uh, it's a whole series uh, taking pianists through methodically how to learn the Goldberg variation. That is awesome. That's on the well-rounded pianist, but on YouTube are some samples of of um, some of the variations. So it was, I the Goldberg variations was one of my big pieces when I was in graduate school, and I did a lecture recital on them, and they were one of my big big pieces that I used to play when I performed a lot and. Um, I, they're great. They're, in fact, I'm planning on also in the box scholar catalog is uh, in the works in the next, probably in the next couple of years, hopefully, will be an edition, um, um, a performing edition of the Goldberg Variations, the complete Goldberg Variations with commentary and discussion on the. Um, relationship of variations and the tempi of the variations and tempo relationships based on my article from 2000 i think 2005 i can't remember what year it was in a piano magazine that is awesome and anyway you no know, i love the gold variations i love teaching them i think they pianists can benefit from them so i am planning on an addition in the near future on the gold variations also um, so, because I know a lot about them, I, I, <laughs> I know a lot about the Goldberg variations, like in terms of teaching them and the way that Bach organized yes. them. Yes, that is awesome. And another one of my books that'll come out. Well, maybe that'll end up in Piano Marvel one day. I don't know how many variations we have. I think we have two or three in there, and I put them at uh, almost concert speed for the hardest for the people that can do the sasser test who get up to the highest levels i put the i put the really fast ones at the uh i i put them in there at a fast speed so that if there's anyone that hasn't played them and get up to that high speed in the sasser but we don't have all the we don't have all of them in there so maybe one day we could do that and collaborate on that too i don't know this is so cool so exciting i don't have it out yet it takes some time to really get write them out in sebelius oh you know? yeah 
Yeah, I, I would imagine that would take that's, immensely that's, amount of time. That's, that's probably what's holding me back. I just don't, right now, I don't have the time to sit there and put in all the notes for of them. Of course. But um, I plan on doing a very special uh, critical edition of a uh, performing edition and critical performing edition of the Goldberg Variations <laughs> in the near future. So Ellen just wrote back to me. She says that she saw the Goldberg Variations in the Sasser. She said that they're cruel. So Oh, yeah. They <laughs> we yeah. played them at yeah. the fast speeds. She was saying that they're... Mean, mean, mean. Ellen, I didn't realize she was such a good player. I mean, I saw her in our That's live great. stream. She's great. So. Well, good luck to, to Ellen. Thank you, Ellen, for all your your uh, insight. Your insight. Yes, it's oh, yes. definitely helped make yeah. this live stream very exciting, having, uh, having all of our fans be on here and helping ask questions and make this interesting. So thank you. Um, yeah. You're in, yeah, you're, you're very welcome. Piano Marvel is an incredible site. Just go in there and put in Bach, B-A-C-H, and yes. you get uh, recurring monthly discounts on your uh, on your subscription. Yes, there. please. If you're not signed up, you can sign up uh, for a free 30-day trial. Um, and if you put in the Bach as the promo code and you ever do go um, turn into a subscription, uh, you will get a discount, which is nice. We all love discounts. So uh, I think... Yeah, you can, you can practice this complete book on there, yes. too. Yes. And... Sight reading and harmony exams, which are coming very soon. Yes, yes. They're actually in Piano Marvel right now. The book's not out, but the book will be out soon, and everyone should go buy that. That's a great resource. Sight reading and harmony is a great resource. Well tempered hand is a great resource. And all these books that you're getting ready to come out, I'm sure they're going to be great resources as well. Thank you very much. Well, I hope so. so. That's, that's, that's why I'm here. Uh, <laughs> make books. And, and, uh, disseminate information and knowledge. Well, thank you very much. I don't see any more comments, so I think we're good to, to end this live stream. It's been a good long one. Thank you. You've given us so much knowledge. Thank you. Thank you. I can't say that enough. Um, You're welcome very much. And, uh, and um, until we meet again, maybe we'll have another one soon. Yes, sir. That would be fun. Thank you. Have a great night. And uh, I'm going to stop okay. this right now. Okay. Alrighty. Bye, everyone. Bye.